Hello everybody, it's Tom Binder, and in this video, or in this podcast, I'm going to be talking with SV Studios about some pretty uh, important things uh, relating to the workshop today. We thought we would talk about some of the do's and don'ts of map making, so you can sort of sharpen your skills, and why it's a very good idea to sharpen your skills. SV has also been making Ancient Warfare 3 videos for a while now, so we decided to collaborate. So welcome to the podcast, SV. Yes, thank you. Uh, before we start, I'd just like to clarify, we are not trying to attack any particular map makers. We are not trying to criticize anyone. This is just supposed to be a helpful thing. Uh, please do not be offended. I'm, we apologize if it comes off as snooty or anything like that. It is not meant to come off like that. Yeah, it's very, very constructive. Um, that we, I don't think it's even been, been brought on. Like, we didn't see something that in inspired us to make this video or anything like that. It's just... Uh, for the purpose of, of being a resource and trying to, to put out information more publicly, I think, is using yeah. this platform. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, um, I guess we, c we can start out by talking. We have a little list of, a little outline of things to talk about, uh, about the state of the workshop. What, what do you think about the workshop in, in today's day uh, and age? I, th I think the workshop has gotten a lot better than mm -hmm. when I first joined the game. Uh, if you look at the current front page, it's mostly maps which have a lot of effort put into them, a lot of scripting, that kind of thing. There are, of course, still flat maps, um, maps with very little to no scripting, uh, with not very good mechanics, but that's fine. They're a minority at this point. Yeah, I've also noticed um, in, a, in a big way, um, just just even from the thumbnails, you get a sense of, of more people are, seem to be investing more time into their projects and kind of treating this game as... Maybe its own thing, as opposed to just sort of a, a clone of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, which is the mindset that a lot of the flat map makers are in. So it's kind of cool to see that the game has been kind of developing its own identity. Yeah. So I think kind of we, we want to keep that going. We want to encourage and steward that process by making this video if we can. Yes, I hope that this video manages to do that in some way. Mm -hmm. I'll probably post it on the on the Steam Workshop or something, like I usually do, and try and push it out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the main because thing, I think... a lot I of think, people don't have Discord. Yeah. Okay. The main thing, like I was... Yeah, so, it's just the big gap. We're, we're not really one one monolithic community, so it's kind of hard for the people who... I mean, the people who use the server also use Steam, but th they use it for very different purposes. It's mostly just putting out their content, whereas you've got a whole different circle who are on the forums and stuff like that yeah the people who come to mind immediately are ravmar and daniel at least those are the people we interact with on youtube yes um there, are, there is a quite a few other people who upload maps regularly and i do not i have not had any contact with them i do not think anyone from the main discord community has had either people like drew um i'm not going to try and pronounce his second name and neo bob they've been publishing like six or seven maps in the past few weeks and I, we have not had any contact with them, so that's a little unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. And even people like Isaac Buddy started out where they were only on the Steam Workshop. He's now in the server, but doesn't talk there very much, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, same thing with Dr. Bright. Oh, I didn't know. I, I thought he was in had been in the server for a while, but I must have been getting confused. There's actually a fair number I of don't... SCP people. Uh -huh. I don't think he talks that much, but uh, he is in the server at least. Yes. Yeah, so I'm around there. Well, um, I guess we should we should kind of get into th into things here with the do's and don'ts of map making. Hopefully, this, yes, this is helpful to some people. So you had a, a list of prepared notes that you wanted to talk about. So what what would you like to to start off with? What's one of the more important things? Um, one of the most important things which I see in quite a few maps is units that this is getting a lot more into the specifics and not that general anymore units that are hiding around corners and the thing is these kinds of things artificially ramp up the difficulty of the map but the difficulty should not be that you just die immediately it should be something that you can if you're paying attention you should be able to surpass all the challenges of a map yeah i think that's just an example and we could probably lump this together with with other map design choices that are just in general artificially inflating the difficulty of a map because you also want the player to at least be having a, a certain amount of, of fun when they play the map and if you put units in ways where they can attack the player without any chance to react or you know you can have a drought of healing items and ammo items that can also have a 
have an impact on their experience and maybe make somebody rage quit even so yeah because you also have to keep uh, keep in mind who the people playing your map are going to be um the primary audience is of course very young people but i don't think we'll be counting them for this cuz i don't think they'll be playing even the more difficult maps that much but not i don't think anyone plays ancient warfare 3 for a really big challenge they play to have fun um a lot of people the map creators play to create maps mostly but people want fun they don't want a really challenging map which they have to spend hours and hours to defeat Yes, that's true. And you know, if the person who's making the map really difficult has fun making it, then that's perfectly fine. Um but but also you, the the expected consequence of that is that not as many people are going to play it uh from the Steam workshop because I think the general feeling like you said is people want a somewhat more casual experience. We can still make it, you know, difficult, yeah. challenging, but Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah. Um Yeah, so okay. The next on my list, I have telegraphing things, which is like if you have scripted attacks and the like, it should not be that they come out of nowhere. There's no way to um expect what's going to happen. There should be some sort of animation or even a sound effect or even info nodes if you don't want to use your own voice or anything like that. Um that just makes it easier if a player is playing attention uh, paying attention to the map, it will be make it easier for him or her to complete it. Yeah, I think it's it's a good example of rewarding the player for for kind of taking taking a deeper look at things if you just subtly telegraph actions like that. Yeah. And that's also like, you know, part of that philosophy of trying to make a self-contained game within a game, like having your map feel like a level of something else. Yeah. One of the best ways I found to do this without using a lot of scripting or anything, and this is only applies for the modern era. is giving flashlights to units because you can see the little um fear of light moving around and it makes it much easier to keep track of units who are coming coming around corners and like oh yeah that is a good idea i suppose it would also work with with lasers to a certain extent as well but those actually i think still hasn't been patched clip through walls unfortunately the uh, gun mounted lasers I haven't used them that much so I don't really know. Yeah. But they are also probably a little harder to see. Mhm. All right. So the next thing I have on my list is sound design. Um I think this has already been summed up in the previous point but sound design really adds to the atmosphere of a map not just music even ambience um sound effects when you open doors sound effects when uh, Absolutely. enemies die. that kind of thing really really adds to the map and makes it feel a lot more professional yeah it's sort of going on uh building off of what we were saying earlier um just just that sense of of feeling that like uh, you're playing a different game for a few minutes sort of suspension of disbelief which is well and this is a little bit um you know it's an unrelated design choice but it still kind of i think follows the the same underlying thought process of of making the player just for a few minutes have this illusion that they're in a completely different world and that's why you should also always not let the player see the edges of the map which is something i say a lot but yes yes so the next thing i have i have uh, i'm reaching the end of my list here is interesting ways to introduce and kill enemies so the thing you have to keep in mind is even if you have very good gameplay if it's very drab in the aesthetics and that kind of thing the player will still feel a little underwhelmed whereas if you have interesting ways to introduce and by extension killing enemies um that can stick with the player a little more an example i can think of is to, just today i was developing my uh, good of the company the rebellion campaign i have these guys who are passive units who come down on ropes and i and functionally they just act like regular soldiers they just take a little while to get to the battlefield but that kind of thing will stick with the player a lot more than just someone who walks around the corner or that kind of thing mhm especially if you add some like like you were saying audio cues or something as well so that the player really thinks oh something's about to happen and when it does very memorable yeah that's a very good good philosophy to follow interesting ways to kill enemies that's a little harder to do but um that can also lead into the next point which is puzzles but we'll get into that later um having some enemies explode upon death is really fun um yeah. having them have death animations also adds to the map 
Um, but there's not a lot of ways you can have interesting deaths. Yeah, unfortunately. There was that one uh, green versus tan map that was made by, I think, Amazed, that really yeah. uh, I really enjoyed because he had all the passive corpses, uh, pa uh, custom animations, and then created piles of really passive cool. corpses. So that was a cool thing to do. Yeah. It, again, that also adds the sense of scale, too, which is something that you should consider doing depending on the type of map you're making. Is See if you want it to be representing a huge pitched battle, and if you want to do that, take as many steps as you can uh, to to add to the size of things, even the number of units I dying. I think a lot of scripts that have been made by no idea really contribute to that. The yes. Specifically mm -hmm. the casualty counter script, also the artillery, no, I don't think the artillery barrage script fits here, but the casualty counter script especially. Yeah, and it's awesome that that has become uh, fairly mainstream as well. I've seen that turn up in you know, battles that transcend genres and, and uh, game modes, which is awesome to see. Yeah. I actually used a modified version of that very script in one of my maps, but it's quite a bit different. I put them on pieces of paper rather than as custom infos. Oh, cool. Alright, so the last two points I have is reward exploration and puzzles. So uh, let's do the exploration thing first. If you have massive maps, and this uh, is the kind of thing you'll have more in maps like Good, in the vein of Good of the Company. If you have massive complexes with a lot of doors and interlocking hallways and the like, um, but there's only one path which you have to follow. Don't if uh, if there's nothing to explore in the side corridors, don't make them accessible because then the player just ends up aimlessly wandering for a long time with no reward for his troubles. Mhm. Mm that's something that can you, you never want to frustrate the player or have them too confused. There should always be a, an option open. Uh, hold on, sorry. Yeah. Okay. But yes, I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and now the last point on my list: puzzles. So puzzles are something which can uh, not too compli. I don't think we can make very complicated puzzles in this game, and making those would also be rather frustrating to the player. But they do really add to the sense of this being a different game rather than just a red versus blue battle simulator like tabs. This is not meant to be a dig at tabs, by the way. Of course. But yeah, totally. Um, that it really sets it apart when you have, um, you know, triggers and and highly sophisticated events taking place, which you wouldn't really be able to get on something that was more or less just a battle simulator. You could, to be honest, somebody could could create like a character-driven, like, drama game in Ancient Warfare 3, uh, which would be totally yeah. uncharacteristic of it, but would really set it apart, I think. And that's uh, yeah. the, the puzzles and scripting that we do that. I was actually considering that. doing something like that, like a narrative-based campaign with very little combat in it, but um, I have too much to do right now, so maybe later. Yep, that's, uh, you know, we could... <laughs> if, if you don't have much... or if we can take a slight detour, another thing on the don't uh, side of things is don't pile on too many commitments for yourself and I think every one of us in this community has at least some first-hand experience with that happening it can cause stress and burnout when really you should be playing this game to have fun yeah uh, one of the best things you can do for burnout is take a break from either that campaign or the game itself um, I was experiencing burnout with good of the company the rebellion uh, a week or two back I just stopped working on it for a week, worked on Steam Wars a little, and now I'm back to it, and it's I've regained my zest for it. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm trying to think um, what I did. I think I, I think I took a break as well. Um, yeah. No, that's, that's good advice. I just worry sometimes when I see people po post uh, these demos uh, and work-in-progress versions of their things because... You, your brain can sort of trick you into thinking like, oh, the, the the real work's done, I can finish this whenever I want, but then you never do. Yes. That is sadly common. Mm -hmm. Because, this, you know, the, this game, like like we've been, I think there's been the, the underlying uh, theme of this video, at least, uh, is, the, is that you can do a lot more with it than is commonly seen by a lot of people. And so it's sad when, when somebody announces a project and it, it sort of falls through. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, so that's it for my list. Um, in case you have any more points, I'd like to hear them. Um, well, you covered a lot of really uh, useful things, especially for um, bigger campaigns and stuff like that, where, where you really want to throw the player into the immersion. Um, I guess I could talk a little more on the micro scale of things, where if you're just making a, one battle or even just one set piece. Um, yeah. It's always... Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, it's... What I was just... Um, thinking is that it's it's always sort of a constant struggle to to make a map look realistic but then you also you know you don't want to go too far and, and too realistic that it lags your game where you like throw down so many objects uh, for the environment and try and make because you're never going to get things looking like earth i mean ancient warfare 3 is fairly you know polygon <laughs> based and stuff it's not it's not ancient warfare 3's art style does not lend itself to realism very well it does not in some, in some like lights and um, textures, it looks very nice and like very crisp, uh, and, but it doesn't really always look realistic per se. Yeah, it looks it looks good. It doesn't look realistic. Mm -hmm. So just I would say is a, a do is to always put uh, a fairly even amount of effort uh, in all the areas that the player is going to have access to, or even just see in a map because you can take them right out of the action and that goes right along with uh, making it feel like a, feel like you're playing a, a self-contained game. Yeah. Obviously the don't is don't like get bogged down. Yeah. Um, just a caveat to that, uh, don't over detail areas which the player is just not going to see because for people who don't have as good computers and can't run as big maps uh, like me for example. Um, it just makes the map unplayable for basically no reason. If the player can see it, you should detail it. But if it's like inside a building, which is, the, which is just the background, don't remove the details from it. Yep, that is a very good philosophy to live by. Um, unfortunately, something that will happen a lot is that people will just just detail these, these big structures uh, and think, you know, that'll be one of the first things they do is build the world. Uh, and they'll think maybe the player will go in here, so put a lot of detail in a skyscraper or something, but then the path of the gameplay that they later build doesn't take them in there, and they decide, well, it won't hurt to keep all that detail in, but unfortunately, that can make the difference for a lot of lower-end computers. And uh, I think you were saying earlier that a lot of the people who are going to be playing maps in this game, at least, you know, for now, are going to be younger kids, and for the most part, I, if, I, if I had to guess, they are not going to have access to some of the higher-end tech and play a lot of these maps, which is yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, they're not going to be able to run 20,000 objects. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be able to find that that happy balance. Um, detailing is always good, but I would also say you can at sometimes go a little overboard with it. Like sometimes XXXX's maps have uh, objects and stuff like that in places where, to be honest, you know, again, realism is not exactly this game's strong point, but um, just as an example, when I played uh, Orbital Station Moonglow, there was um, sort of like uh, wooden shelves in the space station, um, which it does look nice. The way the light was bouncing off, it looked nice. But you also do have to consider how did a wooden shelf get on the space? You just you just have to sort of uh, consider, I guess the the story of how the objects got there too. And I'm not really advocating for people to, you know, think of a backstory for every object you place down in the game. Yeah. Uh, and also, by the way, I yeah, want to clarify, not an attack on Orbital Station Moonglow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I think the wooden shelf is a little bit more realistic, but in particular what jumped out to me was the fireplaces and the potato sacks. Um, oh, yeah. That, yeah. Yep, just um, stuff like that. Yeah. I think that's, that's also possibly a, uh, a risk that comes along with being over prefabbed in your map design because it can look very nice especially you know from zoomed out but then you have people wondering a little bit more about the nitty-gritty and people can overlook quite a lot um, especially considering you know if you have so many prefabs it, it becomes a very well-oiled process of putting together a gameplay experience which is what this game needs is a steady stream of content but you don't want people to be questioning the the finer details very much so yeah but people can really, really look over a lot more than might even be considered reasonable. Um, you could 
get an idea of that by just watching some of daily tactics videos mm-hmm. um, the maps he plays are frankly not very detailed and not a very good representation of the game but that is what he plays and that's what he seems to enjoy yeah and that's another reason why i think this video is is going to be important because if it can reach people who don't normally um consume this kind of content that will be great because there's a lot of benefits that come along with kind of you know improving your craft in in this game and by the way both me and sv have made a lot of tutorials about about that if you want to check them out that would go along well with this video but the benefits of uh trying to teach yourself more uh about the mechanics of this game are are quite extensive it will definitely help the public face of the game if the big youtubers play you know high quality content and if you, and even if you want to look at it selfishly, it'll make the community like you a lot more. Yes, that's true as well. You'll get more. You'll get better numbers, um, more subscribers. You can you can do all kinds of stuff. And you'll get nice comments from the Discord members. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I've run out of list items for myself. So um, we're going off script at this point. Mm-hmm. I, I, the benefits of improving your skills was about the last thing I had before we got to the conclusion. Um, but is there much, is there anything else we, we should elaborate really on? Uh, again, this is certainly, this was not inspired by, by anybody or a reaction to any content whatsoever. Um, it, it's definitely just meant to be a learning experience because the game right now, I think, is in a much better state than even the last podcast I did, the one with Mammoth. We were a little bit sort of dejected about the way the game was being portrayed and stuff like that but if we can just get a steady stream of you know well-crafted content to sort of overtake the content that maybe has less time put into it then the game will gradually get the sort of coverage that we want uh, and, 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 and uh, try I help don't know about the coverage I don't think we have got, gotten to that stage yet but I think we've reached the um, steady stream of content part because for the most part if you look at the last few months of the workshop, you'll see that it's been mostly good maps. Mm-hmm. Um, with only the odd map, like the Clone Wars map from a few weeks ago. Um, but we don't get a lot. Like, um, just a week or two ago, there was a map called Five Houses, Five Hostages. And um, this is not, uh, I don't mean any offense to the creator, but I did not expect, I did not have very high expectations going into that map. Then I was surprised to find there was quite a bit of scripting involved in it. It was not just a hostage rescue map, and I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that is very cool. Um, it goes to show, I think, that that people are starting to catch on to the idea of scripting, and and again, uh, to to view Ancient Warfare Three as something a little bit different than just a, a straightforward battle simulator, which is awesome. And I don't think we're at that stage where YouTubers are consistently giving this game good press yet. But who knows if. If you know this this deeper uh, deeper crafted content becomes the norm for the workshop, then maybe that'll start. Or in another situation, maybe you will become you will get a million subscribers overnight. <laughs> I'll I'll make um Among Us and Ancient Warfare three at three a.m. and then I'll just my subscribers will just go up in a straight line. <laughs> there are quite a few Among Us maps you could play those. There are. I was noticing that actually. That could be uh, an interesting cross-community challenge, because I haven't played an Among Us map that really uh, recreates or captures the, the experience of that yeah, game. Yeah, no, there aren't any. Mm-hmm. I have not seen a single one. Uh, there was a, There's one on the front page right now, front page technically. Oh, really? It has two upvotes and three downvotes. Um, it's a giant map. I was I actually had uh, expectations for it, because I saw the load map was massive. I thought it maybe actually recreated Among Us, which might have been interesting, but it was just a bunch of units on Wander and one red unit. Um, not, that's uh, not an attack on the creator. Okay. But yeah, you can see though um, that that really is just scratching the surface of the mechanics uh, of this game. And I do think that it's it's certainly possible that if this person knew how to script and, you know, was willing to put in the time, then they could probably have, you know, hours of replayability by adding some more of that uh, Among Us... Fl- <laughs> Gosh, how did we get on this topic? That Among Us flair to their map. Like, uh... <laughs> like voting out and stuff like that yeah the ai stuff could be cool mm-hmm. like figuring out who you'll vote for who's sus am i right yep yep very true very true now i am a little bit worried um to be honest and 
This is not, a, a gosh, you know what, we're doing a lot of disclaimers. I think everybody knows by default that I'm not attacking the people who make these maps. But I have this slight yeah. itching worry in my brain about the, this, about the Steam Wars, actually, about there being too many passive maps out there that don't have gameplay on the front page because YouTubers don't, don't cover them for the most part. Or if they do, they have, they have very little to say and often skip past them. And that Daily has said before that he doesn't think there's been very much new stuff in the Ancient Warfare 3 community, and that could possibly be why there's not as many gameplay experiences. Um, no, I don't. I think Daily has a different problem. I think he just doesn't know how to properly look for the maps. Um, but yeah, true. I can understand your, I can understand your concerns about Steam Wars. But I do believe that most of the members on there are also working on some playable versions of the map. Uh, I am, and I believe Madden is working on some in the future. He's planning to work on some in the future. But yeah, at the moment there are. It's mostly passive maps. Okay. That is cool, um, and I do. I th the thing I appreciate about it the most is that you you put a tag, or at least usually put a tag that says Steam Wars, um, so that the people you know know that it's passive. Because I think what we want to avoid is right is people being blindsided and thinking there's going to be gameplay there. But I really am quite impressed by the depth of the lore and the story in in Steam Wars. I I, w I was looking in that server just yesterday, and I saw stuff uh, in the Palmarian tab, and I, I watched the video of like little dark age and I'm like I have no idea what's going on this is ancient warfare 3 what <laughs> it was war crimes um, <laughs> yes the yeah steam wars has really evolved very well and I'm actually really happy to be a part of it nice well I, I might definitely um, try and look at it more in the near future I just haven't been as as around in those servers just because of real life stuff but I am trying to get back into things uh, at the moment yeah, that's fine. but yeah um, is there anything I else you really want to talk things about? To say. I think we've run out of things to say. All right. Well then, um, I think what I'll do is put sections on this video if people want to to know the specific topics and, and skip between them. Uh, but I think yeah. we got a lot of do's and don'ts down, to be honest. Yeah. Um, well then, uh, if, if you're fine with concluding, I could just do my, my usual outro and say thank you for, oh, hey. for, for tuning in. Well, I'll start out by saying... Thank you for tuning in, SV, to the, to the podcast. It's always awesome to be able to talk to somebody else, just kind of one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And also, apparently, people like to listen to these uh, to these podcasts. And if you would, would like to see any of SV's yeah. content, his channel will be linked in the description. As well as uh, my Steam Workshop. If you want to follow me, I could put his in there as well. Actually, I could be, be very, very generous. <laughs> but if you want to support uh, this, this podcast, you can always leave a like and subscribe. Like I said, there will be plenty of content available for you in the description. Might be another podcast coming fairly soon. I'll, I'll see what the response is to this video and uh, go from there. And, and this will be up on Steam as well. So thanks again for, for tuning in, both SV and the people listening. And I'll see you in the next video.